Fancy, join me in the old study. A few dreams, and tonight we'll share the dreams of a vagabond, a man who traveled to all four corners of the world in search for a dream. The same sort of dreams that perhaps you have and that I have. And then the fulfillment of that dream, and then the destruction of it. Vagabond's House and Farewell to Vagabond's House. And now, off to the South Seas and the Trail of the Vagabond.
leads across the hill into the neverness beyond, and not for all the restless thrill of changing skies, only for him who knows the ceaseless urge to go, go ever on, carried by tide and trade winds pulsing surge, lured by the bright mirage of far-off places, forests and jungles and bleak frozen spaces, Ready to bid love greeting or farewell with the same light gesture, knowing the spell that makes thee somewhere else the promised land, carrying no whiff if sun or surf or Samarkand shall bleach his bones or curious creatures of the sea play havoc with his flesh, content to be lover of chance with loneliness for a wife. Faithful to faithlessness of all save life. Ready to face that last dim misted trail with eager eyes and pliant muscles fail. Thinking of death and just another place to go. Another road to walk and another land to know. The road of the vagabond. And I am a vagabond. I travel hither, thither and yon, searching for something, always searching, always searching. My chest is filled with gold, 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 vagabond's gold and drifter's gold, worthless, priceless dreamer's gold, gold of the sunset. Gold of the dawn, gold of the shower trees on my lawn, poet's gold and artist's gold, gold that cannot be bought or sold. The gold of the vagabond. And like all dreamers, I too dream my dreams of another road just beyond the hill. Another land that I've never seen before. Something that keeps calling and calling and calling. West of the sunset stands my house. There, east of the dawn. North to the Arctic runs my yard. South to the pole, my lawn. Seven seas are to sail my ships to the ends of the earth and beyond. Drifter's gold is for me to spend, for I am a vagabond. Fabulous cities are mine to loot, queens of the earth to wed. Fruits of the world are mine to eat, the couch of a king my bed. And all that I see is mine to keep. Foolish, the fancy seems. Oh, but I am rich with the wealth of sight, the coin of the realm of dreams. For I am a vagabond. Someday I shall have a house, a vagabond's house, and I would love nothing better than to have you share all those dreams with me there. 
When I have a house, as I sometime may, I'll suit my fancy in every way. And I'll fill it with things that have caught my eye and drifting from Iceland to Molokai. Oh, it won't be correct or in period style, but... Oh, I've thought for a long, long while of all the corners and all the nooks, of all the bookshelves and all the books. The great big table and the deep, soft chairs. And the Chinese rug at the foot of the stairs. It's an old, old rug from Fa Chao Wan that a Chinese princess once walked on. And my house will stand on the side of a hill by a slow, broad river, deep and still, with a tall, lone pine on guard nearby, where the birds can sing and the storm winds cry. A flagstone walk with lazy curves will lead to the door, where a pan's head serves as a knocker there, like a vibrant drum, to let me know that a friend has come. And the door will squeak as I swing it wide to welcome you to the cheer inside. For I'll have good friends who can sit and chat or simply sit when it comes to that. By the fireplace where the fur logs blaze and the smoke rolls up in a weaving haze. And I'll want a wood box, scarred and rough, for leaves and bark and odorous stuff like resinous knots and cones and gums to chuck on the flames when winter comes. Now and I hope a cricket will stay around, for I love its creaky, lonesome sound. And there'll be driftwood powder to burn on logs, and a shaggy rug for a couple of dogs. Boreas, winner of prize and cup, and Mickey, a lovable gutter pup. Thoroughbreds, both of them right from the start, one by breeding and the other by heart. There are times when only a dog will do for a friend. When you're beaten sick and blue and the world's all wrong, he won't care if you break and cry, if you grouch and swear. For he lets you know as he licks your hand that that he's downright sorry and that he understands. And I'll have on a bench a box inlaid with dragon plaques of milk-white jade to hold my own particular brand of cigarettes brought down from the pharaoh's land with a cloisonne bowl on a lizard skin to flick my cigarette ashes in and a squat blue jar for a certain blend of pipe tobacco. Yes, I'll have to send to a quaint old chap I chanced to meet in this fusty shop on a London street. A long, low shelf of teak will hold my best-loved books in leather and gold while magazines lie on a bow-legged stand in a polyglass mixture close at hand. And I'll have on a table a rich brocade that, that I think the pixies must have made. For the dull gold thread on blues and grays weaves the pattern of Puck, the magic maze. And on the mantelpiece I'll have a place for a little mud god with a painted face... That was given to me, oh, long, long ago by a Philippine maid in Olangapo. And then, just in range of a lazy reach, a bulging bowl of Indian beach will brim with things that are good to munch, hickory nuts to crack and crunch, big fat raisins and sun-dried dates and curious fruits in the Malay Straits, maple sugar and cookies brown with good hard cider to wash them down, wine sap apples are the pick of the crop, and ears of corn shell and pop with plenty of butter and, and lots of salt. And if you don't get filled, it's not my fault. And over there, over there where the shadows fall, I plan to have a magnificent concert grand with polished wood and ivory keys for wild discordant rhapsodies, for wailing minor Hindu songs, for Chinese chants with clanging gongs, for flippant jazz and for lullabies and moody things that I'll improvise to play the long gray dusk away and bid goodbye to another day. Pictures in my vagabond's house? I think I'll have but three. 
One in oil of a windswept sea with the flying scud and the waves whipped white. And I know the chap who can paint it right in lapis blue and deep jade green. A great big smashing fine marine that'll make you feel the spray on your face. And then I'll hang over my fireplace. And the second picture... Well, a freakish thing, guardian bright as a Markov's wing, an impressionistic smear called Sin, a nude on a striped zebra skin by a Danish girl that, that I knew in France. Oh, my respectable friends will look askance at the purple eyes and the scarlet hair, at the pallid face and the evil stare of the sinister, beautiful vampire face. I shouldn't have it about the place, but I like while I loathe the beastly thing. I guess that's the way one feels about sin. But the picture that I love best of all will hang alone in my study wall where the sunset's glow and the moon's cold gleam will fall on the face and make it seem that the eyes in the picture are meeting mine. That the lips are curved in a fine, sweet line of that wistful, tender, provocative smile that has stirred my heart for a wondrous while. It's a sketch of a girl who loved too well to tie me down to that bit of hell that a drifter knows when he finds that he's held by the soft, strong chains that passion wells. Oh, it was best for her and best for me, I know, that she measured my love and bade me go. For we both have our great illusion yet, unsoiled, unspoiled by vain regret. Oh, I won't deny that it makes me sad to know that I missed what I might have had. But it's a clean, sweet memory, quite apart. And I've been faithful in my heart. All these things, all these things I'll have about. Not a one could I do without. Cedar and sandalwood chips to burn in the tarnished bowl of a copper urn. A paperweight of meteorite that seared and scorched the sky one night. A moro crisp, my paper knife, that once slit the throat of a rajah's wife. And the beams of my house will be fragrant wood that once in a teeming jungle stood as a proud tall tree where the leopards crouched and the parrots screamed and the black men crouched. The roof of my house must have a rakish dip to shadowy eaves where the rain can drip in a damp, persistent, tuneful way the cheerful sound on a gloomy day. And I want a shingle loose somewhere to wail like a banshee in despair when the wind is high and the storm gods race and I am snug by my fireplace. And I hope a couple of birds will nest around the house. I'll do my best to make them happy so that every year they'll raise their brood of fledglings there. And when I have my house, I'll suit myself and I'll have what I call my condiment shelf filled with all manner of herbs and spice, curry and chutney from meats and rice, pots and bottles of extracts rare, onions and garlic will both be there, and soy and saffron and savory goo and stuff that I'll buy from an old Hindu, ginger with syrup and quaint stone jars, almonds and figs and tinsel bars, Astrakhan caviar, highly prized, and citron and orange peel crystallized, anchovy paste and poa jam, basil and chili and marjoram, pickles and cheeses from every land, and flavors that come from the Samaritan. And hung from a string with a handy hook will be a dog-eared, well-thumbed book that's pasted full of recipes from France and Spain and the Caribbees, Roots and leaves and herbs to use for curious soups and old ragouts. And I'll have a cook. I'll have a cook that I'll name Ojoy, a sleek, fat Chinese boy who can roast a pig or mix a drink, and you can't improve on that, I think. 
And on that gray stone hearth by the fireplace, there'll be a mat for a scrappy, swaggering yellow cat with a, with a war-scarred face from a hundred fights with neighbor's cats on moonlit nights. A wise old Tom who can hold his own and make my dogs let him alone. These are the things that I'll have that I'll share with you in Vagabond's house. Then I'll have a window seat, broad and deep, where I can sprawl or sleep, with windows placed so that I can turn and watch the sunsets blaze and burn beyond high peaks that scar the sky like bare white wolf things that defy the very gods. And I'll have a nook for a savage idol that I took from a ruined temple in old Peru. A demon chaser named Manchu to guard my house by night and day and keep all evil things away. Pewter and bronze and hammered brass, old carved wood and gleaming glass, candles and polychrome candlesticks and peasant lamps and floating wicks, Dragons in silk on a mandarin suit and a chest that is filled with vagabond's loot. All of the beautiful, useless things that a vagabond's aimless drifting brings. And when my house is all complete, I'll stretch me out on a window seat with a favorite book and a cigarette and a long, tall, cool drink that old joy will get. And I look about at my bachelor nest while the sun goes zooming down the west and the hot gold light will fall on my face and and make me think of some heathen place that that I fail to see that I missed some way. A place that oh I plan to find someday. And I'll feel the lure of it drawing me on. And I know what the end will be. I'll go. I'll leave. On to the trail of the vagabond. And my house, the house of my dreams, will fall away. While the mice by night and the moths by day will nibble the covers off all my books. And the spiders will weave in the shadowed nooks. And my dogs, oh, I'll make sure that they have a good home. While I follow the sun. And while I drift. And while I roam to the ends of the earth. Like a chip on a stream. Like a straw on the wind. Like a vagrant dream. And the thought will strike with a swift, sharp pain that that I probably never will build again. This house that that I'll have in some far day. This house of dreams, this house of a vagabond who has traveled the seven seas, the heat of the desert, the frozen north, always in search for a dream just beyond. And maybe this dream house is only a dream. Perhaps it never will become a thing of reality. This house that I'll have in some far day that I want to share with you. Well, it's just, just a dream house. Just a dream house anyway. to see and 
the sea is very still once more, so I rush to your side like the oncoming tide with one burning thorn.
the dreams of a vagabond. Never a tide goes out to sea but carries a bit of the heart of me. Riding the foam and the gray sea rack, carrying no wind if it never comes back. Drifting on and on over the seven seas, driven by trade wind, storm and breeze. Hearing the cry of the sad sea loon, floating a while in a blue lagoon. Bleached and scorched by the tropic suns, spun away when the riptide runs. Hither and thither and on and yon, glamorous night, clamorous dawn, gaining nothing, losing less, loving the joy, accepting the stress, taking whatever the fates may generously give, drifting on, on and on, what a glorious life to live. I am a vagabond. Farewell. Farewell to Vagabond's house. I was young and the year was new when the day had dawn and the sky clean blue when I struck the road that led me north on a wild goose trail to the Viking North. North to the land of the Eskimo, where the icebergs drift and the blizzards blow, where the white cold glaciers grind to the sea and the mad loon laughs in idiot glee at the phantom flames of the northern lights that sear the clouds in the Arctic nights, where the mountain peaks are bare wolf fangs that gash the sky where the North Star hangs. A strange, fierce beauty ruled that land and gripped my mind with a cruel hand. It traced its memory on my heart with a spear of frost and a weird witch art. Summer passed, and the autumn came. The Northland blazed in a leafy flame, and then a harsh, cold wind and a gray fog stole like spies of winter down from the pole. A siren called from the southern seas sent the wild geese down to the Caribbees. While I followed on, a vagabond, seeking the lands that lay beyond, hunting the valleys of changeless green from Mexico to the Argentine, hot wild jungles and sunburned beach where the Marcos squawk and the Paris screech, Mayan ruins and Aztec wall where the condors wheel and the lizards crawl, gators sleeping in green-black mud, and flame trees dripping with flower blood, yawning craters with poison breath, fever, fury, and sudden death, deserts ruled by a sullen sun where the cactus grows and the horned toads run, where a man goes mad with thirst and dies while the buzzards watch with greedy eyes. These are the things I found in the far south land where fear and beauty go hand in hand. On again, to the sunset west, to the magic isles where the lotos rest, in a quiet sea where the trade winds sigh, and the long, slow, golden days drift by like floating foam on a blue lagoon, and the nights are gay with a hula moon. Love and laughter and song are there, where the happy brown-skinned people wear a wreath of flowers, a fragrant lay, and they call it a dress in their simple way. A carefree life in a carefree land where the derelicts rot on a coral strand and the green surf roars and the breakers crash and the gaudy painted fishes flash. The lunar rainbows gleam at night and the dancers whirl in the bright moonlight to the strong command of a shark-skinned drum and the liquid fire of native rum. Hot red lava that flows into the veins of a white man's body and addles his brains. And no one mourns but the lone seagull when the seaweeds root in the white man's skull. A pagan heaven, sinfully fair, and it's just one step to hell from there. Paradise paled in time, and I went on a freighter bound for the Orient. 
And I saw the sights of the Far East. Sing-song girls at a Chinese feast. Gesha strumming the samisen. Beast-like gods and god-like men. Vice to the chimes of a temple bell. Priests with potions and charms to sell. Japanese sandpans, Chinese junks, opium smokers asleep in bunks. Streets of the silk cellar, streets of gold, streets where gods and gods are sold. Bods and Buddhas, and Burmese brass, jewels that were smuggled through the Khyber Pass. Bird's nest soup and shark fin stew, eggshell lacquer and Peking loo. Whirling notches and perfume skin, furious joy and curious sin. From Tokyo to Timbuktu, there wasn't much I didn't do. From Zamboanga to Gay Paris, there wasn't much I didn't see. But always on and on and on, with that restless urge to go and go, till the swift years merge in a blur of memories. New strange lands, caravans over desert sands, lazy days in a gay bazaar, nights of peace under tropic stars. Ships of the water, ships of the air, hither and thither and everywhere, gathering loot of a certain kind for a dream, for a dream that was ever in my mind, the dream of a vagabond. For this is the vision that guided me from year to year on land and sea, a vagabond's house that I'll build someday, whether of dobe or wood or clay, I do not know. Or how or where, so dear the dream that I did not dare to think that ever it might come true. But I held the dream as dreamers do. And in every country and every land, I sought the place where my house might stand. Here on a mountainside, there by the sea. Once in the shade of a banyan tree, now on an island, then on a hill, there by a lake or a mountain rill. Once by a lazy, winding stream. It's easy to build a house in a dream. And then, when hope had almost died, I found a place on the mountainside. By a slow, broad river, deep and still, and a rushing brook with a reckless leap, with an open glade and a rocky ledge, and a forest down to the water's edge. I saw the spot, my heart beat fast, I'd found the perfect spot at last. Oh, I could see the house now. I could see the door. I could see the roof, the walls, and the floor. I could see the smoke from the burning logs. And I could see my dogs. And I could trace the path from the house to the spring. And I could see it all. Except for one thing. The money I'd need to buy the land and build the house. For you understand... That drifter's gold is a priceless thing. But it's not the gold that will ever bring a single sou in the marts of trade. And so... And so I saw my long hill vision fade. And then... And then the miracle came. And then I knew that a dream could make itself come true. At first I lived like a man in a haze, but then... The joys of the building days... The dream house grew from the very soil, stone and timber and honest toil, rising early and working late, hewing the beams and chipping the slate, sawing the lumber, sifting the sand, hammered thumbs and blistered hands. Oh, few are the joys that a man can know like watching the house that is his house grow. Only the one who builds can tell of the griefs and the worries that come as well. Shifting the window, changing the halls, finding the wood for the floors and the walls, picking the colors, matching the stains, choosing the glass for the window panes. But oh, what a joyous labor that. Slanting the roof like an old slouch hat, digging the garden, sowing the lawn, up and about at the crack of dawn, work and worry and heaps of fun until the day, until the day that the house was done. And then the glory of filling it piece by piece and bit by bit. Every corner and every space with just the right thing here in just the right place. Black bull hides on a polished floor. A devil's mask by the squeaky door. 
With a smile for a friend and a frown for a foe And a spell to make all evils go Vagabonds loot from foreign lands Snakewood tables and teakwood stands Chests of pigskin set with brass Cinnabar lacquer and Polish glass Old Satsuma and Cloisonne A gypsy shawl Embroidered, gay with curious flowers and butterflies And birds from a hashish paradise It matched the colors that flared from my mokaw That I brought along from the Amazon And there were low, flat bowls for nuts and dates And wine sap apples on wooden plates And there were boxes of cigarettes everywhere And a soft, warm light by a deep armchair Near the fireplace where the driftwood logs threw a cheerful glow on a couple of dogs. Boreas, lovable mongrel pest, who regarded my cats with a baleful eye, coal black Congo and white Congai. There were quaint old books with paper backs and magazines heaped in spacious racks and funny papers and Scripts of plays to fill the long, gray winter days. And in a deep shadow, as I had planned, I had a place for my concert grand, for the strolling player who might please to bring white magic from the keys, with candles glow as the only light, as the music poured in a quiet night. And the ghosts of gods walked in the room as Wagner sounded the cry of doom, as Debussy wove the mystic's cane and Chopin thundered a voice of pain. And in the kitchen, ruled by an even queen, Caledonian, oh, I've never seen such cakes and pies as she could bake, or lobster curies, the kind she'd make. Her wizardry with a frying pan would ravish the soul of any man. She knew her onions and her garlic, too, and she knew the secret of Brunswick stew. And she could make an omelet as light as down or fry a chicken so crispy brown that the tender flesh would just melt in your mouth the way that is done in the, in the sunny south. And then there was spry old Joy with his yellow face who ran the rest of my bachelor's place and kept it going with wizard's art. God bless his faithful heathen heart. And from cellar to attic, from front to back, there was not one thing that the house could lack to make it perfect. A place for friends who drifted in from the world's far ends with a tale to tell in a willing ear when a glass of wine or a stein of beer had loosed the tongue and the smoke haze grew till the air in the room was foggy blue and the logs burned low and the night was gone and when the light in the windows announced the dawn. A perfect year in the house I spent knowing the full, deep, rich content that a man can know when his dreams come true. When he lives in his dreams and he shares it too. And then, and then out of the hand of fate there came a careless moment. A strong high wind with a deafening roar. And where Vagabond's house had stood before were smoking ruins. And black charred beams. And again, my house was just a house of dreams. And now, now I drift with a restless urge. My dream is gone. The restless urge to go and go while the swift years merge to a blur of memories. And again I find that I'm gathering loot of a certain kind for another vision that's guiding me from year to year land and sea. Another house that I'll build someday. Another vagabond's house. Whether of dobe or wood or clay. Oh, I do not know. Nor how nor where. So dear that dream that I do not dare to think that that ever it might come true. But I'll hold my dream. 
I'll hold my dream as dreamers do. No, I'll... I'll not grouse and I'll not complain if I never build my house again. For the one that I had will always be real in my heart. And will always be real in my memory. A vagabond's house. A vagabond's house. That I hope perhaps... One day, someday, I would share with you Vagabond's house. A dream so beautiful. A dream so real. And so alive. The Vagabond. My treasure chest, always filled with gold. Gold, 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 vagabond's gold and drifter's gold. Worthless, priceless dreamer's gold. Gold of the sunset. Gold of the dawn. Gold of the shower trees on my lawn. Poet's gold. Artist's gold. Gold that cannot be bought or sold the gold of the vagabond and I am that vagabond appreciate this custom-brewed taste of this great beer, I would say that we do. And so do all the other folks here in this part of the world, because they enjoy well over a million two hundred and fifty thousand glasses of Meisterbrau every single day. 
So when the urge for the best of refreshment hits you, make it one of those moments for Meisterbrow. Meisterbrow Real Draft Beer, brewed by the Peter Hand Brewery of Chicago. put the books and the dreams away for another day. This has been the Torch Hour. The work of Don Blanding, Vagabond's House, and farewell to Vagabond's House. We hope you enjoyed it. Your host and companion here, Franklin McCormick. The best of music all through the night. 